Hey guys, even here, welcome to another video. In this video, we have a couple of very exciting news, but we're gonna start with this physique update. Boom! Andrew jacked right now. Uh, I would say already. Already. He just started working with his new coach, Chris Asito, and his new trainer, Chris the Psycho Fitness Lewis, and this is what happened. He looks pretty freaky right now. At this point, at around six weeks out, he looks he looks amazing, honestly. I don't know if I ever saw an update of Andrew Jack in which he looked bigger, rounder, overall freakier. Now I'm sure right here he has a huge pump. Probably he trained his arms, I'm guessing, because those triceps are looking ridiculous. If he didn't, then he just has insane arms. I know he does, but still, like, look at the pop on those triceps. And, like, his chest also is looking pretty full, pretty round. So it may have been a push day. I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter. What matters is what he looks overall. And I would have to say the other guys at the Arnold Classic are gonna have their hands full with Andrew Jacked. This guy actually has the potential to win that show. I mean, it's not crazy to think that. I think he's one of the favorites, really. Like, it's gonna be between him, Nick Walker, Samson Dauda, potentially. I think Andrew has a better chance of winning that show than, for example, Big Grammy. Maybe Big Grammy is gonna come back and look better than ever, I don't know. But I don't think so. I wouldn't bet on him. And the chances of Samson improving that much and beating Nick Walker, I mean, he will probably improve and he will probably improve more than Nick Walker will. But, you know, he was pretty much spot on. Samson was the Mr. Olympian. He wasn't able to come close, Nick Walker. And Andrew Jack, he wasn't on at the Mr. Olympia, he was off with conditioning, and he was sick for a while before that show, and now he has a new coach. Now, you guys probably heard, you probably watched my video in which George Farah basically said that he stopped working with Andrew Jack and Blessing and all the other big guys because, because of his illness, because he's not well physically and he can't be stressed with the big bodybuilders anymore. So he wants to take it easy from now on because training these, I mean, coaching these top bodybuilders is definitely a big stress, especially because if they win the Olympics, they get nearly half a million dollars and if they place only fifth which is also a big success but it, it's much lower than first they get like ten thousand dollars so like that that's a big big difference and it can be really stressful so george fair doesn't want to do it anymore and i'm sure he was stressed like crazy for the mr olympia and that might be part of the reason why andrew didn't bring his absolute best and George Ferris said that Andrew was at 70-80% at Texas, so we have yet to see Andrew at 100%. And Mr. Olympia wasn't it. Is it gonna be Arnold Classic, where we get to see Andrew at his full potential, 100%, or something like that, close to that, now with the help of Chris Asito? Maybe, maybe, but not only because he's coached by Chris Asito. I think George Farah is a great coach. I think he really brought something incredible from Andrew Jack, and I think he also did a great job with Blessing, but apparently he doesn't want to get stressed that much anymore. So it's not only because of that, because Andrew changed coaches, but because... Obviously, Andrew Jack is really focused right now because, again, he hired a new coach, a top coach, Chris Asito, and also he went one step further, he went out of his way and he hired a trainer. I mean, how many of these bodybuilders are willing to do that? To hire somebody to train them, literally, every day, one-on-one, -on -one. like not many, almost nobody is doing that. And I'm sure it helps a lot being pushed like this to your absolute limits. This speaks how focused Andrew Jack is right now, how much he's willing to do, and he's going to give, I'm sure he's going to give 100% of him to bring his absolute best to finally showcase his physique at 100%. And again, he has a great team. I mean, Chris Psycho Lewis, in my opinion, is currently the best trainer in the world. 
I would have to say better than Charles Glass. I mean, of course, I wasn't trained by Charles Glass, I don't really know this, but from what I saw, based on videos, Charles Glass is really focused on crazy angles, these new crazy variations, weird uh, exercises. I don't like that, personally. I'm more of a old-school guy myself. And Chris Psycho Lewis is exactly that. He's doing mainly old school hardcore exercises and he's really able to push these guys to their max and i think that is a great way to bring really something special to that Arnold classic stage and based just on these photos of andrew that we can see right now at like six weeks out i think we can be pretty sure that he is bringing something crazy to that stage next i wanted to talk about uh, samson dauda and his sponsor Fuad Abiyad or Hostile Supplements. So Fuad posted this YouTube video in which he explains that Samson Dauda and Justin Shire as well both signed contracts, long-term contracts with Hostile. So uh, Justin Shire signed a contract for five years and Samson Dauda signed a contract for four freaking years. Like for somebody on that level, I mean being sixth in the world and maybe higher after the Arnold Classic, that is a long contract for somebody like that. Like in four years, he might like win the Mr. Olympia twice. But yeah, Ford also said that once a year they can negotiate the contract. Samson can ask for more money if he thinks he deserves more. However, the interesting part of this video was when Ford said that this is the biggest contract that Hostile ever signed with any athlete. And you guys must remember that Hostile was sponsoring Nick Walker for a while. And the reason why they stopped working, from what I heard, this is just the word on the street, I didn't ask for this, I don't want to bother him, I'm pretty sure he would answer, but this is just what people are saying online, uh, some people that I know that are into supplement business, and basically from what I heard, um, Nick Walker was getting like around seven, eight thousand dollars and he was asking for double after his contract is ended, and Ford wasn't willing to give him that much. So now, how much is, is Samson receiving? It might be like $1,000 more than Nick was receiving, like maybe $8,000, I don't know. This is just guessing, I have no idea really what is going on, but the interesting part is Fua decided to pay Samson more than he was paying Nick Walker. Why is this? I mean, you guys know that Nick Walker is, let's say, unarguably the most popular bodybuilder in the world right now. I mean, he has 1.2 million followers and uh, Samson has only 200,000. Also, Nick is third in the world right now. He won the Arnold Classic and he's very outspoken. He's really out there on social media doing podcasts and stuff. And he has an interesting personality as well. I mean, he's not, he's not really talkative, but he has an interesting personality. Unlike Samson, who is kind of pretty bland. You know, he's pretty, I don't want to say boring, but he's not as interesting as, as Nick, let's say. So why would Wood pay Samson more? Well, one of the things is definitely potential, like Samson can potentially win the Mr. Olympia in the next couple of years, but who knows that, maybe he's gonna stay in the top six, or maybe he's gonna drop down, like Ian Wallier was seven two years in a row, and then third year he was 11th, maybe Samson is gonna go down to like eight or nine. who knows? That's really not something you can predict, maybe Fuad has a hunch, or maybe he just wants to reward Samson's uh, loyalty because they have been working together. I think he, I think Samson was sponsored for like two or three years at this point. So probably because of that, because he's already so associated with Hostile, Fuad wanted to keep him there. And Samson is, you know, aware how valuable he is. And he probably believes he has potential. So he probably asked for a lot of money and Fuad accepted that. Do I think Samson deserves more than Nick does? I wouldn't say so. Maybe now, yes. Now that Nick changed like, I don't know, three sponsors within a year. Now he doesn't have as much integrity. Now he is with HD Muscle. And I'm guessing soon he's going to change that sponsor as well because they are not really big. They probably aren't paying him enough money as much as he wants, as much as he deserves because of his popularity, because of uh, his reach. But then again, if Samson is easier to work with, 
if he's doing everything. You guys remember when when Fuad stopped working with Nick, there was this talk that Nick wasn't willing to do the appearances, to travel. Maybe Samson is more willing to put in the work and Fuad appreciates that and that's why he's gonna pay Samson more than he was paying Nick. I mean, be my guest. Tell me what do you think. Uh, I wish Fuad is gonna watch this and he's gonna comment down below and tell us why, but I don't think he's gonna explain himself. He doesn't have to. But it is very interesting that Samson Dauda is being paid more than Nick Walker. Maybe this means Samson is gonna beat him at the Arnold Classic. Who knows? We will see. All right, next we have an update of Akeem Williams. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody forgets this guy because he's not super active on social media. I mean, he wasn't so far. It seems like for this Arnold Classic prep, he's definitely way more active. He's out there. He's posting updates. As you can see, this is him right now. He actually says side tricep six weeks out of Arnold Classic. So this is him right now, and he is humongous. I mean, this is the only guy that can match Nick Walker on that stage with his arms. He actually has crazy arms, triceps, not that much, but biceps are super, super peaky. And this guy was sixth at the Mr. Olympia at one point. If he brings good conditioning, if he comes actually peeled, and for some reason I have, I have a hunch that he's going to really bring great conditioning because he's so active on social media. Maybe he really wants to bring something crazy. And as long as he brings good level of conditioning, he has all the tools necessary, really. Like, he has a lot of muscle. What he doesn't have is a great back. That's gonna hold him back for sure. Like, his back is not very good. He has really high lats. But when he's shredded, his back does look better. And he's practicing posing more this year. So, if everything goes well for Akeem, he can be one of the top guys. If Big Remy doesn't bring it, and this guy really, really brings it, I think he can beat Sean Clarida and he is going to be battling it with Samson and Andrew because I do have Nick Walker winning this show most likely. I think that is a likely scenario if Akeem brings good conditioning. Oh yeah, and 2023 is going to be the year of comeback of John De La Rosa. That's right, it's been a long time since we saw this guy on stage. I don't really know how many years, maybe like five years or so. Some of you guys probably don't even know who he is. Some of you new younger guys, but I'm sure most of you guys remember John De La Rosa. Uh, this guy is usually doing New York Pro because he is from New York. So I'm guessing he's going to do the New York this year as well. He is really known for having this, uh, I wouldn't say round look, I would say squarish look because he is a shorter guy and he's really wide and he does have that 3D kind of look and super full and long muscle bellies in his arms in that chest that chest is really like really squarish and full and round and uh, he's really thick as well and he can bring decent conditioning he doesn't really always bring it but when he brings it he, he brought it a couple of times then he looks really dangerous I don't think, I'm not saying this guy can be like top 10 at the Mr. Olympia, I mean, maybe he can if he brings crazy conditioning, but like, he's not that kind of caliber of a bodybuilder, uh, maybe he was top 10 at some point, but today, that's really tough for him to accomplish, however, this is very interesting to finally see him back on stage, we'll see how he's gonna do against the new guys, but he does look fresh, he does look really good, he does look young he doesn't look like he aged at all he had some injuries in the past i think last year he decided to come back but he had an injury during prep so he had to stop his prep but as you can see now he's back and i don't really see any injuries i think his body looks really fresh he still has that roundness those long long muscle bellies and that uh, aesthetic good looking shape Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. For more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.